Hello Cloud Gurus, I'm Nigel Poulton and welcome to this month's episode of Kubernetes This Month. As always, we'll go over the major announcements from the previous month in our quick catch up section. We'll dig deeper into a couple of those in the deeper dive section and we'll finish things up with a Guru of the Month segment. So make yourself comfy and get ready to enjoy. So what's been going on in the Kubernetes universe this month? I'm going to start the ball rolling with Rancher 2.3. So Rancher, the popular enterprise Kubernetes platform, gets a 2.3 release. Features and updates include cluster templates, GA support for Windows containers, and simplified installation and configuration of the Istio service mesh. So congrats to the people at Rancher. And I think, as we'll see, right, a bit of a trend this month with Windows containers and service mesh. Anyway, sticking with enterprise-grade Kubernetes, OpenShift got a 4.2 release with a heavy developer-centric focus. Amazon EKS, Amazon's own managed Kubernetes service, that also got GA support for Windows containers. Sivo, they've announced Cube 100, apparently the world's first managed Kubernetes platform based on the increasingly popular K3S or Keys, which, if you're unsure, is a certified lightweight distribution of Kubernetes, I think originally intended for edge locations and IoT where resources are constrained. However, it's increasingly popular as a lightweight, faster spin-up development environment. Linkerd got another new release, 2.6 this time. Now, new versions of Linkerd are coming thick and fast, I know that, but I think it shows the general fast-paced development associated with the service mesh space. This release, though, brings distributed tracing, performance improvements for larger clusters, and traffic split visualizations in the dashboard, plus a bunch more. Sticking with service meshes, MuleSoft announced its AnyPoint service mesh powered by none other than Istio. The KubeVirt project to manage virtual machines in Kubernetes, that got adopted by the Cloud Native Computing Foundation. Microsoft and Alibaba have announced the Open Application Model, or OEM, as a kind of standard for simplifying the development and management of Cloud Native apps. Now, it may be worth keeping an eye on this one, and I will, but I'm not super convinced by it at the moment. Sticking with Microsoft, they also announced Dapper. This is a developer-centric, distributed application runtime, aimed at making it easier to develop cloud-native microservice applications. Another one from Microsoft that may be worth keeping an eye on. And last but not least, something that definitely is a thing and is definitely worth watching. The Linux Foundation has announced the schedule for the first ever, drumroll please, Service Mesh Con. Deadly serious. And we're going to talk about it in the deeper dive section. Speaking of which. Okay, so in this month's deeper dive section, we'll pick up on KubeVirt and Service Mesh Con. So KubeVirt, I suppose a quick primer might be needed. We all know Kubernetes orchestrates containerized applications. That's kind of its thing, yeah? However, it also can orchestrate other workload types like functions and virtual machines. Now, I'm talking here literally deploying and managing applications within virtual machines on Kubernetes. So I'm not talking about provisioning new VMs to act as workers and masternodes. I'm talking here about running applications on virtual machines. So the VM is the runtime, yeah? A couple of use cases for this in case you're wondering. First up is workload isolation. Now, we probably all know that while containers are smaller and faster than virtual machines, they don't really isolate workloads. I mean, all containers on a single host share the same kernel, right? Well, VMs don't. Every VM gets its own dedicated kernel and VMs have got a strong story when it comes to isolating hostile workloads. Another use case is simply that some applications haven't been containerized yet, or maybe the vendor only supports them on virtual machines. It does still happen. Well, KubeVirt is what makes virtual machines on Kubernetes possible. And congratulations are in order because it has just been accepted into the CNCF as an official sandbox project. 
meaning? Well, I'm going to cut straight to the chase. It's a public endorsement of the project from the CNCF. Kind of like having your name called out and being invited to dine at the top table. So increased awareness, no doubt some marketing, and all round good news for the project. Now on to Service Mesh Con. Yes, I am actually going to dive deeper into a conference, and for good reason, right? So KubeCon is happening in San Diego this month, only its official title is KubeCon and Cloud Native Con, because it's two conferences co-located over two and a bit days, yeah, Tuesday through Thursday lunchtime. Well, they just announced an additional co-located conference, Service Mesh Con, to take place on the Monday, right? So yes, I guess later this month I'll be attending KubeCon, Cloud Native Con, and Service Mesh Con, or if you want an acronym, KCCNCSMC, who knows? Anyway, I'm talking about this because it is yet another humongous sign that Service Mesh is literally white hot now. I mean, we're talking about Service Mesh pretty much every month on here, and it's something that I'm getting asked about personally again and again. And we know the technical and the real world requirements for having a service mesh here. Yeah? I mean, cloud native microservices apps are hard, right? And we need to secure them and we need observability and the likes. Plus, we need to be able to influence traffic flow and adding intelligence like circuit breaking and latency aware load balancing and all of that good stuff, right? And service mesh brings all of that. Well, we now have an official service mesh conference and I'm sure it'll be epic. Anyway, that's us done with our deeper dive this month. In last month's Guru of the Month question, I asked which Kubernetes alpha feature is designed to increase performance and scalability of large service objects? And the answer was endpoint slices. As usual, we had some great answers, but there can only be one winner, and this month, the winner is Suman Chakraborty. Suman is a senior DevOps engineer from Bengaluru in India. So thanks again to everyone who pitched in, but Suman, you're our winner this month and you'll be getting a goodie bag in the post. This month's question is in the forum link below. And if you think you know the answer, seriously, get involved for a chance to win. And on that note, I'll see you next month. Same cube time, same cube place. Thank you.